Good day again, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, we are back together and we're looking at question seven from the Gauteng paper. Um, I hope that you've really been working hard, doing your part, making sure that you're preparing towards those final exams. All right. So today I'm going to look at question seven from the Gauteng paper um, of 2021, uh, September. Okay, so that's the prelim paper, right? Uh, just a quick diagnosis of how well you did. So uh, please, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, just make sure that you're part of the family, right? Okay, so let's get right into it. Oh, by the way, a reminder, uh, if you need help with either mathematics, physical science, uh, you're more than welcome to send us that uh, email. Uh, the email address is info at mlungesingosi.co.za. All right, let's get right into it. So it says a metal sphere with the, oh, we're looking at electrostatics this time around. So we're given a metal sphere X, there it is there. Okay, with a, a charge of five micro, uh, nanocoulombs rather, is suspended by an inelastic thread of negligible mass, which is tied. Okay, so there's our uh, sphere X is tied by thread there. Okay, they say another metal sphere Y on an insulated stand, which is that guy over there, uh, is brought closer where X uh, uh, to X rather until their centers are 20 millimeters apart. Okay, so there they are 20 meter, uh, millimeters apart. S first thing they say state Coulomb's law. Ladies and gents, please, these are free marks. You need to be able to always uh, uh, state you know, these uh, principles. So Coulomb's law, remember, uh, it says the electrostatic force all right, between two point charges is directly proportional to the magnitude of their charge and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart, right? Okay, so uh, let's start with 7.2. So 7.2, um, they say calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force that the sphere exerts uh, sphere Y rather exerts on sphere X. Okay. Um, uh, oh, come on. These are free marks, right? So I'm sure you got this one. So uh, we know we're going to use Coulomb's law. So F is equals to K, uh, QX and QY. Okay. Divided by the distance between them, which is R squared. And all we do is just to substitute. So this is nine times 10 uh, to the power nine. Okay, multiplied by the charge of X, that would be 5 uh, times 10 to the minus 9, uh, and that's going to be 8. And please note, I am only substituting the absolute value of my uh, charges. So I don't need to substitute the sign there, okay? Uh, the only thing I, I use the sign for is to determine the direction uh, of my uh, of my force, right? So in this case, it's going to be a force uh, divided by the distance between them. So that's 20 times 10 minus 3, okay, millimeters, or you can simply just divide by 1,000. And please note, uh, you need to be able to, uh, you know, uh, um, state or to know the scaling factors in this case. When you say nano, you know that's times 10 to the power negative 9. Uh, when you say micro times 10 minus 6, okay, um, and, and all that. Right, so quickly let's find out our answer. Okay, and I get an answer of, um, so 9 times 10 to the power minus 4 uh, newtons. You can verify that, and remember, this would be a force of attraction, okay? Right. Uh, why? Because I've got unlike charges, so that would be a force of attraction between those two. Right, and then um, they say, uh, the next question, they say, draw the resultant um, electric field pattern produced by spheres X and Y. So in this case, I'm looking at the field pattern between those two. Remember, this is going to be positive. Okay, so this is X and this would be y okay so we're looking at the resultant between them okay so remember that uh, field lines okay so because they are attracting each other you'd have field lines that look uh, more or less like this okay so right okay so 
make sure that they're at 90 degrees there okay so remember that now i'm going to specify direction from the positive they're always moving away okay and they're moving towards the negative charge so in this case i'm going to indicate and please make sure that your lines never touch each other okay um secondly just make sure that your lines are connected to the sphere uh, oh no i made a mistake here sorry sorry ladies and gents these these arrows should be actually moving away sorry about that okay so that should be those should be moving away sorry about that ugly drawing and to the negative they must be moving towards the charge okay and the reason for that is that we are looking at a positive test charge Ooh, now that drawing looks really terrible okay but i hope you can understand uh, what i'm trying to say those field lines would be moving uh, away from the positive charge moving towards the negative charge uh, in this case so that's what our resultant field would look like um, by the way uh, th th it could be necessary i guess to just show that a uh, y has a bigger uh, charge and how you do that is that you show it by our line density so the number of lines around y would be actually more than the number of lines around x okay so that's the field line density okay so the last question they say sphere y is now moved closer and makes contact with sphere, uh, sphere x uh, after which uh, uh, spheres x uh, uh, sorry after after which sphere x is repelled right they say calculate the new charge on sphere x now please remember ladies and gents so when whenever we take point charges and they are brought together closer and or, or caused to touch and they um uh, thereafter you know they are separated what happens is that there's a transfer of charges that takes place okay so in this case what would be the net charge that is what would be their charge after they touch so we simply just calculate it as the net charge so that's 7.4 okay uh, this was our 7.3 so we say well the uh, the net charge or you can say the new charge would always be the uh, uh, charge of x plus the charge of y now note ladies and gents if i had three charges touching each other i'd say x y and z or whatever you know uh, the magnitude of the other charge is so i take the charges add them up and divide by the number of charges that i've added so in this case i've got two charges we're simply going to divide by two okay uh, to get that net charge right um so now all i'm simply going to do now this is the only part rather in electrostatics where i'm going to take the magnitude as well as the you know uh, um you know the sign uh, the polarity so qx was positive so that's five uh, exponent times 10 minus 9 um, okay plus oh there I almost multiplied so plus uh, I'm going to take that negative 8 so I'm adding negative 8 times 10 to the power minus 9 okay and we divide that by 2 okay so what would be the magnitude uh, sorry written that so terribly okay so what would be the magnitude of our uh, new charge so uh, all we need to do is just okay so that's five okay minus eight okay the only reason i'm doing that is because i can see that they've got a common factor there okay uh, and our answer is five minus eight uh, that would be minus uh, three and minus three divided by two that would be minus 1.5 so it means that the magnitude of the new charge okay i'm just going to uh, shift this move this along so the magnitude of the uh, of the new charge would be minus 1.5 uh, times 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs okay so that would be the new charge um you know i, I know this wasn't asked but if you know just to uh, remind you of that okay essentially we are done okay uh, just to remind you ladies and gents uh, so what does that mean uh, in terms of x and y you'll see that initially x was positive okay 
and y was negative right so what happened it means as they touched each other it means uh, electrons were transferred from sphere y to sphere x as they touched each other right now afterwards after touching both of them have got a negative charge of minus 1.5 so this would be the new charge and that's why they would kind of repel each other because um, uh, now the polarity would be the same okay so their polarity would be the same and not only would it be the uh, same polarity uh, both negatively charged but they would also be uh, have the same magnitude so uh, sorry this is coulombs right um, so uh, usually they used to ask the question what would be the uh, uh, how many electrons were transferred and all you simply do ladies and gents to find out the number of electrons transferred okay so the number of electrons uh, you can take either one you can take x or y so you can say well let's take the charge of y right final that is after uh, um, you know they touch and you subtract the charge of y uh, before they touched and you divide that by the unit charge of an electron okay so what was the charge of y after they touch it was minus 1.5 times 10 minus 9 right uh, minus the charge of y before they touched uh, this was uh, so the charge of y before they touched this was minus 8 so this would be minus remember there's a minus sign here uh, a negative 8 uh, times 10 to the power minus 9 and you would divide that by the unit charge of an electron right and what would be that minus 1.6 times 10 to the power minus uh, 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 19 sorry 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 and you would get the number of electrons okay i'm not going to bother much with that i just wanted to show you uh, just in case they asked you to calculate the number of electrons that were transferred this would be quite relevant for grade 11s as well okay so um yeah and that's how the cookie crumbled you got yourself some free marks there i'm sure you did well okay so i'll see you again next time when we do the next question all right thank you so much ladies and gents sharp sharp